is March 11th, 2010. We are with Angela Maley at the Whitley County Historical Museum. Thanks for having us, Angela. Thank you. Um, can you tell us about the museum today? Sure. Um, right now we're standing in the parlor of the Thomas Riley Marshall House. Um, the house was actually built in 1864 and the Marshalls moved in in the 1870s. Um, they lived here until 1908 when Thomas became governor, and 1908 was the last time that they actually lived in this house, and then it changed hands several times until it became the museum in the 1960s. Um, and like I said, this is the parlor. Several pieces of furnishing were actually owned by the Marshalls. Um, I can show the rocking chair there was Mr. Marshalls as was the sofa and um, the secretary the large desk was used by Lois Marshall, Mr. Marshall's wife. Um, Thomas got married in 1895 um, to a lady named Lois Kinsey who was from Steuben County and she was I believe 23 years his junior so when he married her and they, and she moved in, um, he had had some things uh, done to the house, updated to make it a little bit nicer for his new bride. Um, some of those things are the parquet floors that are seen throughout the house and also um, there is leaded glass and some nicer tiles put around the fireplace. Um, another couple of things of interest in this room are the, um, there's a photo up here. His name was Peter Simonson, and he was a captain during the Civil War from Columbia City. Um, he was actually killed in Georgia in, I believe, 1864. But um, the Civil War is a pretty important part of Whitley County history. Um, something like a sixth of the population actually went to war from Whitley County. So it was a pretty vast number. So, of, so they left a, a big hole. Yeah, I think it was like it ended up being something like 1,800 men from the county were actually involved. And Do you know what company they went to? Not off the top of my head. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but um, there are uh, several people around um, that have been able to trace their roots back to, to men that fought. Um, Chuck Jones, mm -hmm. the, he was president, he's a member of the society, the treasurer of the board, um, had a, a couple relatives fight in the war, and he's been able to trace them back. Very they cool. Were from Whitley County. So it's a. Um, Whenever we do a Civil War program, we get a huge, huge number of people come in because there are a lot of people from the county that sure. are really interested. So, and then also, um, this chair was one of only a handful of chairs made in Whitley County. Was it handmade or was it made at a factory or? I think handmade. It says it's circa 1841. Pretty good craftsman. Yeah, that's really nice. But this type of room would have been used for um, socializing or... So the piano may have actually been in this room. Um, probably not. Well, um, Maybe not this particular. But yeah, this particular one wasn't. It's but you know, probably something. But anytime um, Mrs. Marshall or any of them would have had any kind of visitors, they would have sort of socialized in this room a little bit. Cool. Do you want to go to another room? Sure. Um, one other sort of aspect of interest with the architecture are the pocket doors that they had put in. Um, they still roll really well and work really well. And they just pull out and close off rooms. And actually, these um, 
they had them painted to match the room, or well, these are wood, but on the other side they're painted white to match the parlor. But um, they're from the late 1800s and they still work really well and roll really nicely. And then also um, in this entry way, uh, the leaded glass windows are part of what Marshall had added um, in 1895. And they are really, really beautiful when the sun comes through in like the late afternoon. Well, early, early afternoon, about two or three o'clock, the sun streams in and they cast prisms and shadows on the, like rainbow oh, shadows on pretty. the floor because of the, of the, you can see the kind of rainbow effect. Now we're in the library of the Marshall House, the room we call the library. Um, there were built-in bookcases that extend across the room. And this is where we have a lot of Marshall's uh, legal belongings, his sort of business belongings. Um, the desk there was used in the office that Marshall, the law office that he worked in which was located in the building where uh, Star Insurance is now. It's the corner of Chauncey and Van Buren. Um, and so he easily could walk to work. He didn't have a car. He didn't use a horse and carriage. They pretty much, you know, walked transportation-wise because um, they didn't own either a car or a horse and carriage. We have a lot of photographs of Marshall here, um, various ages, and then this, of course, is the fireplace where the nice tiling is that he had redone for his wife. Another couple of interesting things. Um, these photographs were given to the marshals by um, royalty from believed Belgium. Uh, when Marshall was vice president, he and his wife did a lot of entertaining of foreign dignitaries. And Marshall was really well liked. He was a funny guy. He, he had a really quick sense of humor. And, um, and he and his wife were noted as good hosts and hostesses. And so these photographs were signed and given to Thomas and to Lois. So these are like his campaign buttons? Uh, these aren't necessarily his, they are just campaign buttons in general from the history that we've collected. And uh, a ballot box that was used in the county, early ballot box. This um, was Marshall's notary seal, and it still works. Um, we have, whenever we have school groups come in, we give them little sheets of paper and have them try it out just to see what it was like. But you push it back, and it still somewhat shows his seal. It's probably hard to see, but it says it actually shows Thomas pretty Marshall, good. Notary Public. Um, Whitley County, Indiana. So you probably couldn't, you know, notarize something and take it uptown and probably catch that. They right? probably would. <laughs> but it's kind of nice to have something, uh, it's nice to have things like that that were marshals that the kids can see and sort of relate more easily to his life. When we do school groups that come through, I sort of try to get them to imagine what it would be like to live in a house like this because it's completely different from, um, you know, a lot of the houses that we live in now. It's larger. The woodwork is incredible in this house. Um, there's obviously no TV, you know, no radios, no computers. No PS3? That's right. And so especially when we are in uh, this next room that we would move into, we call it the music room because we think this is probably where, probably where uh, they would have had their piano or their organ. So in this room, 
is when I kind of bring up, you know, how do you think it would have been like um, to entertain guests in the past? You know, what, what would they have enjoyed in the evenings? What kind of activities would they have enjoyed? Um, probably they would have played, you know, an instrument, the piano. They obviously wouldn't have had TV. They wouldn't have even had radio yet. Um, no video games. So it's kind of hard for people nowadays to. I imagine. bet they get with that look on their face. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot of a lot of, um, of students say that they would like to have a house this big, but that you know they wouldn't want to have to not have a computer or a TV or an, a video game or different forms of entertainment. done a lot of reading, and played piano, sang, you know, socialized with people. Okay, next room. This is now in the dining room of the Marshall House, and it is furnished um, with some Marshall pieces, this um, larger cabinet buffet. Uh, was owned by the Marshalls. There's a few pieces of crystal um, goblets that were part of the Marshall um, estate too, but most of the pieces have just been done by, donated by members of the county. Um, and we, it's a little stuffed with furniture, but we do that just so we can show examples of furniture from that period of time. Um, we have a lot of, of China and um, serving dishes and things like that that we like to showcase. But it's a nice large room. It could feed a lot of people it in this room. People, yeah. And then one of our main points of attraction in this room is this um, Shinzo Oka painting. And it's a um, lovely, wonderful, huge. It was donated by the Presbyterian Church, um, which Marshall was a member of the Presbyterian Church and was, as was um, Mr. Oki. Um, and Mr. Oki was a Japanese born man who had emigrated to the United States in the early, late 1800s, early 1900s, um, but went to uh, Seattle, the Seattle area, met a family from Columbia City and eventually traveled back with them. He went to Columbia City High School, graduated, and um, went away to college, came back and opened the Oriental Show You Soy Sauce Factory. Um, and he was an um, amazing, talented man, was a gymnast, um, was a painter, just a real really interesting character. He lived in, in uh, Columbia City until 67 when he died. Um, but this was one of his paintings. And the, the museum has about 14 of his paintings, I think. Wow. But he was really a prolific artist. And there are lots of people in the county that, have, that own some of his pieces of artwork. Yeah, the library has one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, he was really interesting. And his daughter is still alive. She lives in California. Um, she was born here and graduated from Columbia City High School as well. So, but it's one of our favorite pieces that we have because it's just so magnificent. It's so huge. It is huge. All right, this area we call the Marshall Hallway. It's the little hallway that connects the dining room with the kitchen. Um, and we wanted to concentrate a lot of Marshall pieces all in one area. We have these boards that kind of give um, a brief biography of Thomas Marshall. Um, and then we have pictures, um, political, political cartoons. Political cartoons, yeah. aren't they cool? Um, and some really interesting ones. 
Some when he was governor, and then um, some when he was vice president, or when he was becoming vice president. And then in the cabinet, we have, um, here are where we have a lot of uh, buttons, the uh, campaign buttons, political buttons, and then some pictures and belongings of marshals. He was an only child, um, did a lot of moving around. He was actually born in North Manchester, and then his family did a lot of moving, uh, mostly due to his mother's poor health. They ended up um, here in Columbia City after he had went to Wabash College. And um, then he was a lawyer here. And Are these his famous five cent cigars? Right, yeah. Yeah, um, he's known for the, the quote, what this country needs is a good five cent cigar. And um, so they did a lot of marketing. Um, he was kind of, when he first became vice president, he was sort of looked upon as a, a little bit of a buffoon because he kind of always had a wise crack and, and he wasn't really taken seriously. But um, he was he had come to be really appreciated and, and well liked by members of the of Congress. But um they really marketed that whole five cents cigar thing. And then after the presidency vice presidency he uh, moved back to Indianapolis. And um there's a picture here of Marshall with a baby. Um, he was going to, the Marshalls were going to adopt this child, um, but he died before the adoption was finalized. So, and then they never had any children of their own. Marshall had several tragedies in his life. He did. Mm -hmm. um, he was going to be married prior to Lois, when he was a younger man, he was going to be married to a girl that lived uh, her name was Catherine Hooper. She had lived um, just down the street in the Hooper house. And uh, Marshall worked for her father, um, with, with her father of labor lawyers. And then she died right before the wedding. So, so he was never, never married her. And then it was several years before he met Lois and married her. So it's kind of sad that they never had any children. Especially that they, there are, we have a lot of pictures with uh, Iggy, they called him, that's his nickname. Um, but it was really well known in Washington, D.C. and in society that, you know, this was the child they were going to adopt. They took him everywhere, have tons of pictures with him. So they really made a connection, you know, and it was really sad for them. It would have been really sad for them that he passed away. <laughs> And now we're in the kitchen, um, which we don't have any uh, Marshall's belongings in here. There are just more items from people um, that lived in the county. It's both the Thomas Marshall House and the Whitley County Historical Museum. So we don't just focus on Marshall's life, but we focus on the whole county, the county history, which has a, the Kansas County has a great history and lots of um, things that have happened and lots of uh, really rich history. So these are pieces that just kind of um, show what your different appliances would have looked like. Um, there's washing equipment. Um, so we just kind of get different examples of what irons would have looked like and washing boards and how you would have dried your clothes, how you would have cooked back then. So these are some washing utensils here? Mm -hmm. um, these are old irons, and they're really extremely heavy. <laughs> um, I like having students lift them because they can't imagine ironing with a big solid piece of iron. You know, our irons now are much lighter. And these were like actually put into the fire mm -hmm. and yeah. then used to iron. 
And then this is an example of something they would have used to <clears throat> dry clothes. Um, they would have put them through here and cranked this, and it would have squeezed the moisture out. And they would go through these rollers. And it still works pretty well, too. But you would wash them with the, in a tub with your washboard. And you know, do that, and then you crank it through this so that it would squeeze the moisture out, and then probably hang it. And then really tell, different. tell us about the stove here, how that would have worked. Um, the stove... Here. They would have filled it um, with coal, I think. Um, but it would have not only cooked, but they probably would have used it as a source of heat, too. To heat the house, heat the kitchen. It looks similar. Part of it looks similar to what we have today. But it would have been a much different process, uh, as was the toaster here. This is an old type toaster. We put the slices in there, and this would be the heating unit. And there's and you just put it on top of the stove then? Um, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think that this would have actually heat, been the heating like, mm -hmm. unit inside. Um, I'm not sure if this plugged into something or not. I actually don't know that much <laughs> about it, but it's kind of funny just how you would lay that there. We talked before about Shinzo Oki when we discussed his paintings. These are bottles of his soy sauce that was made in the factory. It was um, in the southern part of Columbia City down past the railroad tracks, but um, they made not only sauces, but they would make like chow mains and, and some um, prepared uh, Asian foods. And, um, and that still got stuff in it. Yeah, yeah. Some of them do still have stuff in them. Wow. They were in, um, the company was here until 62 or 63, I think. And they were bought by Beatrice Foods. And then the company moved out of Columbia City to, Ohio, to a, a factory in Ohio somewhere. But, but there are still people, um, a lot of people actually around that had worked for Mr. Oki and worked in the soy sauce factory. So, in fact, um, Columbia City 1938 mm -hmm. has a section where they are in the factory and they show it and they talk about, about that factory. So it's kind of funny to imagine a soy sauce factory in Columbia City, but it was really prevalent, a big part of, big part of the city. This um, is the, the landing, the top landing. We have put in um, examples of sewing equipment, uh, an old sewing machine, some spinning wheels, some dress forms. Um, back in that time and earlier, people still would have made clothing at home, so they used the dress forms over there to um, that would have been sized like them, so they would have been able to, to fit the clothes and make the clothes on them. So I see they're adjustable, but you would just adjust them to whatever size you were at that time? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Boy, mine would always be different. <laughs> yeah. But, um, like the washing, the, you know, cooking, clothes making, um, well, washing and baking and things like that, they would have had specific days where they would have done those because they would have taken a long time. And they would have made their own clothing. So things were incredibly different than they are now. It would have taken a lot more time and effort to do things. And one of my favorite pieces in this room um, are these shears. They were giant. <laughs> 
Wow. And they are said to have been from the Harper Buggy Company, which was in here in Columbia City. Um, that was destroyed by fire in the 1920s. But these would have been used to cut the um, upholstery, cut leather. Wow, those are they're gigantic. <laughs> <laughs> But pretty interesting. They're really heavy. They, I think they would have been hard to use. Now, this is the what we call the children's room. Whenever we give a tour, we refer to it as the children's room. Now, like I said before, Marshall did not have any children, so this room would not have been used as um, a children's room with, with them. But because so many um, toys and um, items have been donated. We wanted to give uh, visitors an idea of what uh, things would have looked like in a child's room, what kind of um, bed, you know, how the bed would have looked in that time, and what kind of toys kids would play with. So we have a lot of really good examples. The rope bed is fascinating, uh, especially to younger people now, because <laughs> they can't imagine sleeping on a bed that you know, have ropes and you had to tighten it. Um, yeah, no box springs or no, no you just right. tightened the ropes just, yes. however you wanted to yeah. sleep, huh? And then they would have had some kind of little, maybe a little mattress or pad or, you know, some kind of down filled or straw filled pad to lay over it. Um, in a house like this, uh, they would have had it a little bit nicer, you know, than maybe some other people would have had. But, um, they probably all would have had to share, too. More than one to a bed. Right, more than one to a bed. And little tiny irons. Yeah. Yeah, they... As is less the case today, but uh, before, you know, they, a lot of toys were domestic, you know, more like smaller versions of, of things you would use in the house, but it was all a domestic play with toys that would resemble what your mom did during the day. Um, now this piece is um, one of my favorites. It's a cradle. It's on wheels. And it has a handle that you can pick up and carry along with you. Um, this particular one was built, uh, I think, in the later 1800s, like the 1880s. But also, a similar item would have been um, used by slaves when they would have to go work in the fields. They would have to take their children, their young babies and children, along with them. So they would lay in there, and then they would pick this up, and just as they're walking to the fields, they would take the, the children along with them so they could watch them, too. Um, and not just slaves, but, but other farmers. Pretty cool piece. So would this desk typically have been in a child's room for studies or? Yeah, probably some type of desk, some variation of desk. It's pretty small. It's a, a smaller um, built, so. And there are a lot of little games and there are a lot of little books. Um, different types of children's books. And dolls and carriages were really, really popular with little girls. Some rather elaborate. Yeah, they are. I like the little tricycle too. It's really cute. Little wooden tricycle. Yeah. is what we refer to as the Marshall bedroom, probably was the main bedroom for the family. Um, this bed actually did belong to the Marshalls. Um, and you can see it's not really very long, it's not very big. Um, Thomas Marshall was only about 5'7", so he wasn't a large statured man by any means. His wife was, was about the same height. Um, but it's nice to have piece that they owned up here too. Um, and then we just have various 
examples of clothing in here, hats, um, any kind of grooming um, pieces. Uh, I like the wash stand. Um, indoor plumbing, you know, at different times would have been not, you know, they wouldn't have always had indoor plumbing, so they would use the pitcher and bowl to do washing up. And what goes in the cupboard underneath? Underneath we have, <laughs> <laughs> this is one of the, <laughs> we store this lovely pot that was a chamber pot which when um, people still had outhouses, they wouldn't always want to trek outside in the middle of the night or in the middle of the snow, um, and they would use what they called chamber pots to do their business in, and then they would be cleaned out in the morning. And the kids love that. <laughs> <laughs> they love the idea of the chamber pot. But this particular room, uh, as a museum, we also use for um, a lot of storage since it's a bigger space. We have a desk. Um, have a, we have a lot of pieces of clothing. Um, the museum has a lot of artifacts of clothing that um, we store in uh, acid tree boxes with um, acid tree tissue paper so that they stay. Um, preserved and in nicer shape. And we also um, store quilts in this unbleached muslin um, just to protect them and to keep them preserved for many years. Um, we're in the process of kind of re-inventorying the quilts. We'll be starting to re-inventory the clothing. Um, as you can see, there are mannequins throughout the house that we change the clothing periodically. I change it about every two months, just so um, both so people, the visitors can see how many pieces of clothing we have, you know, the varieties of clothing that we have, and also that it's not um, exposed to too much light or uh, pollutants in the air, dust, things like that. Um, some of the pieces are extremely old and very, very fragile, so they don't get put out a lot, they don't get shown a lot, um, and then some of the pieces that are newer are in better condition, and those are generally the ones that I display simply because I don't worry so much about them, you know, mm -hmm. staying in good shape. So most of your stuff here, a lot of your stuff here is donated? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, people in the county, not necessarily people in the county, but people that have lived here, um, at some point in their life where their mothers or fathers have lived here or were from Whitley County. You know, we, we take items that pertain to Whitley County and um, people are free to donate anytime. Um, we have a committee that that deems whether they want it or not, um, but we are always willing to take you know items that pertain to Whitley County history. Um, we have, uh, like you saw, a variety of things, household goods, uh, you know, anything that would decorate a house or be in a house. We have a huge amount of pictures of the county. Mm -hmm. um, just different buildings, downtowns, families. We have a lot of family pictures. So if people were wanting to see how Whitley County used to be, like this project, mm -hmm. they could come here. Yes, definitely, definitely. Very cool. Yeah. We show that, yeah, we can show pictures or show, you know, any type of item. Um, Old, we have old wooden shoes. I mean, we have, you know, just old uh, sporting equipment. Old, it's just limitless beds and things like that um, that people can see how things used to be in the county. And the pictures are really helpful because they give context. Like, we have a couple pieces of clothing that uh, we also have the picture pictures of when oh. they wore it. So it's really nice because it gives context to see how it looked. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what it, what they wore it for, um, you know, and just how it would have, you know, been presented. Very cool. This is the uh, genealogy office, what we refer to as the genealogy office. Um, we have books, uh, 
pertaining to the history of the county, and not just Whitley County, but here's a section of books that um, talk about the history of all of the counties in Indiana. But then we have um, family histories, people that have, have done their uh, genealogy backgrounds, have done their written their family histories, we have those books. Then we have um, listings of marriages in the county, deaths in the county. Um, we have like obitu books full of obituaries. So anytime that anyone is interested in doing genealogy work, uh, this is a great place to come because we have um, these books and files and things that people can refer to to kind of look up their history. And we also have files in the basement, family files, that people can look through. So it's nice to um, give questions about your about your family tree or whatever. We, we can always help here. Very good. Um, why don't you let us know, <clears throat> excuse me, when you're here? and um, whether you do special tours or? Yeah, our hours are Tuesday through Thursday, nine to five, and Friday, nine to noon. Um, we are open on the second Sunday of the month. We do a program uh, every second Sunday. Um, we actually have one coming up this Sunday. <laughs> and uh, we're always available by appointment. If there's a time that you can't come in uh, during the times that we work, we can always schedule. Someone can be here if it's a Saturday that you need to come in or um, we do a lot of programs for like Boy Scout groups on Monday nights and so that's always something that we're very flexible. Someone can always be here to help you. And how are you staffed? Uh, we have a director, Danny Tipman is her name, and then I'm the assistant director and we have a curatorial technician, his name is Derek Ball. Um, those are the three uh, part-time paid employees. And then um, we have several volunteers, um, people, members of the Historical Society, and then just uh, other people that come in and volunteer. So okay. there's always at least one person here. All right. Well, thank you so much for having us. Yeah, thank you. And we will be back to do the annex at another time. Okay, that sounds great. Thank you. Thank you.